Welcome back to Retro Wednesday, the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about Rock Wars. This is a continuation of the GoBot series. Last week I did all of the 72 standard GoBots. In about two weeks I'll do the Super GoBots, and then sometime after that I'm going to be doing a, kind of a slew of oddities that just kind of work them into one video. But today, talking about the Rock Lords, and they are kind of a spin-off of the GoBots, but it's really cool. I'm shocked how many Rock Lords they made. And you're probably going to be shocked how many Rock Lords they made. What all they went into it. We're going to look at all of the figures. We're going to look at the fuzzy little creatures that they call Rock Gnarlies. And the vehicles and the unproduced playsets. Coming up. So the main meaning behind the Rock Lords... The media was the movie. There was a Rock Lords movie back in the 80s. Came out a little bit before the Transformers 1986 movie. So I guess it came out in 1986. And I have to say that it was a pretty decent movie. It was okay. A lot of people bash it. But I think it was a solid evolutionary step for GoBots. But it still could not compete. It couldn't hold a candle to what happened with Transformers. And so with that, that's part of the reason that Rock Lords saw their demise. But it was still an okay watch. You haven't seen it. You might want to try to check it out. Alright, so starting out with Boulder, we're going to compare him for a size comparison to Super Gobot, Standard Gobot. So he's bigger than a Standard Gobot, so you can kind of see a Standard Psycho. So he is bigger. It was a bigger toy line for the most part, aside from two really small ones, but it was a step up from Standard Gobots. But they weren't quite as big as Super Gobots. Something in the middle to keep a, a maintain a decent price point, but there's a good comparison to get started. And here he is in both modes. Now, I want to say a few things about each one of these figures as we go along. This was Series 1, so we're going to look at the first Series 1 figures. And here is the Rock. It's Rock Lord Boulder. He turns into a boulder. And it looks pretty decent. It's not really going to fool anyone that it's an actual Rock because there's all the joints and lines and cuts and all that kind of stuff. But it does kind of get the job done. It turns into a Rock. Lots of fun. And then... The figure himself, there's really limited articulation. He might have a little bit more than some because he does have his a full like uh, 360 arm rotation. Arm goes out to the side right there. Head moves side to side a bit. And then you have the elbow, a 90 degree elbow. Uh, so the, the articulation was pretty limited on most of these legs. Do just a little bit forward and back. You only got out of it what it took to transform the guy. And so that's about it with these. And here is his weapon. He does have this pretty cool looking weapon right here. He also had, if you if you get him from like other countries, the UK or Italy or some of those places, you get some color variations. So he has a little sniper rifle that plugs into the side or inside of his hand. And so I'm going to pull that out. And then you have uh, this color one. So this one is oddly enough, one from, I don't know, another country. For whatever reason, they made it with a different color. I don't know why just to drive collectors crazy. I don't know if I'm going to go after color variations, but I happened to end up with one, so I figured I'd show it. But this is Boulder, Series 1 good guy. Let's look at the next one. All right, so next up in Series 1, as a good guy, we have Granite here, and Granite does look pretty cool. Uh, he's kind of a beefy-looking dude. He does turn into a sheet of Granite, sort of. That's interesting. And so with that, if you've ever like gotten the Granite countertops and all that kind of stuff, and you've had to pick out your sheets, this is kind of how it goes. I mean, it's as close as you can get with turning this chunky robot into a sheet of granite. He does come with this red gun here, and it also, I happen to end up with an extra one that's a different color too, so it comes with a gray. And it's a charcoal gray, kind of darker one. Anyway, I like kind of how the red, it does kind of have some color breakup to him. He has some paint on his face there, right there. And not much articulation with him. His arm goes in and out a little bit. That's part of transformation. And his leg just... A little bit of articulation right there. So there's not much to them. So not a whole lot with these guys. So with that, I, I can kind of see the lack of appeal in the early figures. When we get the later ones, you're going to see some different stuff going on. But uh, this is a very common figure. And actually, the first uh, Series 1 and most of Series 2 are all very, very common. So very easy to get. Very easy to get for real cheap. And so with that, um, not a bad looking figure. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next one we have is Nugget. Nugget is one of the ones that I had as a kid. So with that, he is kind of a cool little character here. He does turn into a golden nugget, a chunk of 
back metal eyes gold and it's beautiful just a beautiful figure i remember when i was a kid i i, I liked it because it was back metal eyes and i thought it was cool and then i was like oh the other rock rollers kind of suck because they're not that's that's actually what i was thinking i did have magmar so we'll see him here in a little bit but uh, he does have this little feature where this back piece here pops up he's got like a little jet engine or whatever so Looking at the figure himself, he's short and dumpy. He doesn't have hardly any articulation. His arms move around a little bit. He's got the shoulder pads that come up. He has this whatever this weapon accessory is. And I don't even have I don't have a name for these accessories. So I just know I barely was able to match them up and have the right ones with the right figures. So uh, there's his little jetpack. You can fly around, kind of like what we've seen with RGD2 and stuff like that. And if I guess if he wants to like hide out, he can close this. If you push this back down, it closes that. So pretty cool figure though it was was my favorite rock lord uh to today is it my favorite probably not definitely not but i still think he's really cool and a lot of people say that the chrome wears off real easy on these i've seen some that are rubbed down to just kind of like nothing but all the ones i have are pretty good and have held up and i got mine for personal collections most of them so they took good care of them anyway that's nugget next up we have magmar magmar is the only other rock lord i owned as a kid so i ended up buying up collections in the early 2000s and getting more and more of them but this is a very easy one to acquire and so with that this is his uh sword he only comes with one but you know you've got two so i don't want to lose this thing so i have to hold them and i have a funny little thing i show here in a little while but uh so this his head's kind of just kind of stuck in there and you can fold it up and he doesn't really it's just I don't know it's stuck in there i think i started thinking that these figures looking at them as they look okay they, they do the part fine and uh i don't know there's supposed to be a hinge in here it looks like there'd be a hinge in there but there's not but they could use a modern update on rock lords there's just probably not nearly a big enough market to support it or buy them and the problem is that only figures that would get made are the more common ones that you can already buy vintage so they kind of would cannibalize itself with the vintage market anyway here's his whatever he turns into a rock and he doesn't even roll i mean he's just he's a square he's a he's a cube he's a gelatinous cube <laughs> but anyway there he is i guess i have that transform drawing i need to put his face down in there there we go that's magmar pretty decent figure overall and one that i remember very very well from childhood Next up, we have Tombstone. This is Tombstone standing next to his tombstone. The reason being, his rock looks like a tombstone. Now, remember, what do you want to say on your tombstone? I bit my tongue, didn't offend anybody, or I spoke my mind and saved my world. Huh. Well, think about that. So, that's the tombstone. It's a green. I've never seen a green tombstone before, but... Uh, or, or maybe there is just like a rock and it's called Tombstone. Who knows? But here he is. He's got some like wide arm articulation, but he doesn't go front and back. So <laughs> that's all the articulation you're going to get. He does kind of look like a snake. Like his face, he kind of looks like a snake. It's a cool looking face. Like he's got a snake. He's wearing sunglasses. This does really match his on-screen counterpart pretty well. And then uh, his, his legs can kind of go out. So you do get a little bit of articulation. Like not, they can't all do stuff like this, but he can do it. And... And uh, I'll explain again later why he's carrying and holding two accessories. Some of them are, some of them aren't. I'll explain that. This is a funny little skit going on. And then here he is from the back. So he's pretty clean. He cleans up from both, uh, all the sides there. Look at all of the screws and all it takes into it. I mean, they kind of tried to go and, and do a little bit more with these than they did with the original ones. And you got to have to also think that the later GoBot started using a lot more uh engineering and uh the later ones of these use quite a bit too so we're gonna get into that tombstone all right this is sticks and stones he's kind of the thug of the bad guys of the group and he's got two heads and uh kind of a bumbling idiot i guess you could say i don't know i don't i, don't, I watched the movie a couple of times and uh, i don't know what his weapon's supposed to do it's strange it's supposed to i guess simulate him but his arm moves so you have some movement like that with his arm. Uh, so that's cool. That works. And there is a there is a line in the movie that they say six and stones will break your bones. So he, yep, there's the thug. Here he is in his rock form. And it's kind of strange because the way he does kind of transform it, this leaves this just G1 Optimus Prime backpack going on on the back of a rock. And 
and he's got like this crazy looking like holes in his top of his feet. I wonder if I have that right. Maybe I have that right. Maybe I don't. Anyway, Sticks and Stones, pretty cool. Let's move to the next one. Okay, next up is Crackpot. He is the first of the good guys in the Series 2. So Series 2, Crackpot, and I don't know what Rock is supposed to turn into, but it's silver, and it looks like this. It looks pretty cool. Uh, almost feels like you got like a little rock tank going on. But I guess you could kind of position them multiple different ways. And he actually sits just fine. That You can't say that about all of them. Some of them just can't. Especially not Tombstone and a few others. But uh, his arms go out kind of, as I mentioned, Tombstone. Feels like a lot like the Tombstone design when it comes to the arms like that. He does come with this uh, sword right here. It's, it's kind of a decent, cool looking little sword. Uh, gets the job done if you needed to and then he does have some articulation uh yeah like i mentioned it's interesting it's it's like tombstone articulation right here and i guess you could give him a little bit of a pull up to give him just a little bit of a waistline in there but he's kind of a tubby looking dude and there he is crackpot is he a he there, there's quite a few females in this too so that's pretty cool uh let's crackpot let's get to the next series two good guy all right, next up we have Pulver Eyes. Pulver, like eyes. Anyway, Pulver Eyes looks like, I think Pulver Eyes is a female character, but it uh, looks like almost wearing a skirt right here or something. That's that's the way I feel about it, and I, I just can't remember from the, from, the, from the movie, and I'm, I'll probably come across it as I'm doing some sampling from that movie for the video, but uh, here is the, she is, she or he is from the back, and... Uh, so this one is just weird and strange, uh, very little articulation, like with most of them, nothing really special that this one can do, but uh, the face kind of looks like a bug, but has this like triple blaster, rock blaster gun, which is really cool and interesting, just something interesting to have that is specific to this figure, and then has a strange looking little like tombstone kind of a rock formation here that's strange now this is one of the ones that can really you can only have it sitting sort of one way that makes any sense uh this looks like the only way you really have it sit but there's pulverize let's move to the bad guys and gals All right, so here is marbles marbles is a cool interesting looking one very common very very common one out there and uh this is what he looks like just kind of think about marble and granite and all this the countertops in the 80s and 86 they weren't really putting it was very common to put that as countertops. Some, some places, some places really did in the higher end areas, but probably not very often. Okay, so he comes with this gun, and it's a little two-barrel gun. He does have some elbow articulation, and it doesn't plug in. It more like clips over. Well, I guess it does plug into those two little slots too. Those two little slots right there, and he has the two little slots over there, so he could plug it in on either side. Okay, I guess that works. So I guess he could have two of these if he wants so uh and i think there is a recolor of that for a, a different variation but uh, he's got all this green and kind of a goofy look on his face like Durr. and so uh interesting figure he's a little on the short side in my opinion and not really very sought after but you gotta have him to have a complete collection that's marbles okay now we're gonna get into brimstone bad guy beefy bad guy with another one wearing his face on his chest and he does kind of you can kind of pop the face up just a little bit, show some teeth right there. So really strange. You can got some gold accents on them and stuff. And then he comes with this axe. Now you can get a, I think you can get a, uh, you got the gold axe. And then it comes in a black axe, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But he's a mean looking dude. Looks like he's going to do some bad stuff for good old Magmar. And so with that, here's his stone. Whatever the brimstone is supposed to be. Still pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. It's cool. It's just hard to keep this thing standing sometimes. But looks like a nice little little set there with good old brimstone. Fire and brimstone. Next up we have Stone Heart. I think a female character kind of like Steel Heart from the Silver Hawks. Female character there. Have a heart here. Uh, I don't know exactly what stone this is supposed to be. But it looks like a rock. That's what the rock looks like. Smell what the rock's cooking. Well, a falling over figure. So she's got some articulation in the hands, which is different and strange. And uh, as the later series go, they add a few more things. So you can kind of have some hinge right here. 
and the arm goes up to all the way. So, so some some new stuff that uh, maybe is part of the transformation. I don't really remember. It's been so long since I've transformed her, but she's pretty common. You can get her. She's got some big old lipstick on there, and then she's got. It looks like a shark fin or, or some not shark fin, but some sort of an aquatic type of a fin on the back. But it's nice to have a little handle to move her around with. So, uh, her legs. She does have some articulation, so you can kind of do something along those lines with her. And that's pretty good. No out movement. And then she comes with this weapon here. It's a gold weapon. I think this. I think there's an alternate version of this weapon that you can get in black if you get like a European version. I think. Again, I don't have all of the recolor variations. I just bump into them. I go, oh, that's interesting. It's different. And if you buy that from that country, it's going to cost thirty bucks just to ship that figure. <laughs> anyway, this it, it it's interesting. This one plugs in the top and the bottom. It's, it's not, you don't plug it in like normal. This is such a strange one. The way they just, you plug it into a hole, the section in top and the section in the bottom. And it holds really well. It's really, really good. So anyway, this one, I, I say it, it falls out. Stoneheart. <laughs> All right, next on the list is Slimestone. He's a slimy little bad guy. And he is one, you probably don't want to touch too much and get your finger oils all over the shiny, vac metalized look of them. Now, for the most part, mine both look pretty good. And this is uh, this is one that I, I was actually surprised because I didn't know about it back in the day when I was a kid. I guess I only, I never got past series one with the Rock Lords as a kid. But to see him show up and be like a counter to Nugget. And uh, it's cool though, but he's silver and... Uh, Vac metalized silver instead of the vac metal gold, and uh, and it looks good. It's a nice shiny look to him. I kind of like it. Uh, I don't like his weird, crazy wide stance that he has to be in. There's really no way around his wide stance. Uh, you know, you could sort of do that and make him maybe stand like this, but uh, I I don't know. The there's piece in here that restricts it from moving any further than that. So you have to have him in this silly wide stance for him to work, but he can move his arms like so. And uh, his weapon does not want to hold in very well. So uh, it's a lot like Stone Heart's weapon. Uh, and there, there it is. That's the weapon and strange, but interesting. It's a slime gun or something, but made of gold. And I think they, I think if it's gold, then there's a black variant out there or something like that. Um, some of them are red variants and stuff. So, uh, some of them have up to three different colors of weapon variants, but I don't have them all. I just had a couple, but kind of fun to look at. Slimestone. Okay. So Spearhead. Spearhead is the bad guy of series three. And this is where they all start getting interesting. So from this point out, I think all of them are more interesting and cooler than what we have seen in the past. But anyhow... Uh, here we go with his mean looking face. He is a kind of a beefy looking dude and you, you could have the option if you want to have him kind of thinner or wider and beefier, uh, because of the transformation. So they start adding in these different elements of fun to it. And then here he is from the back. There's some gappiness in his back right there, but overall pretty clean figure. And with that, he does have some articulation out to the side. Uh, for some reason, I thought he had some, some more movement in the hips. His arms go all the way around, so he does have a little bit more options there. Now, I don't have his weapon. I apologize, but I've never even seen one uh, for sale. <laughs> so, um, Well, you know, talking like the past year or two or so. But if so, I just missed it because it sold that fast. Here's his uh, rock. I actually had to call in. So this part out, uh, I, I did call in a lot of favors. So, I mean, a lot of stuff I had to get some help to find because they are getting a little bit challenging to find some of these later ones. So this one here, uh, it, I don't know exactly what you're supposed to say it turns into. It really does just look like him squished up. Uh, and we're going to see that with a couple of the transformations. They just kind of squish up on there. But I'm okay with it because he looks cool. He's beefy. Spearhead. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so the next one we have is Saber Stone. Saber Stone? And this one is interesting. Uh, they, they just get real interesting and strange. Like an alien looking head. I think it's the female character also. And uh, just really interesting. Like E.T. phone home kind of thing going on there. Arms go out. Hands are replaced with like a, a giant, I don't know, tentacle looking thing. So really strange looking. Uh, and uh, for some reason I thought she has articulation right here. And she does have articulation right here. But no knee articulation. So 
So you kind of give up one thing for something else, but uh, really a strange looking figure overall. I just did see one with the weapon cell for stupid money. So I guess I'll just be doing without the weapon. That's fine with me. Here is the rock mode. And uh, it's interesting too, because in this rock mode, uh, when you push this button, the head pops up. So that's part of the transformation. So they start doing and integrating button stuff going forward. So as long as you don't break it. <laughs> don't break it. Anyway, this one's a little bit harder to get. Uh, and with the weapon, just pretty much impossible. That Saberstone. Next, we have Solitaire. Solitaire is with the Jewel Lords. And I think the Jewel Lords are good. But I mean, I, for a while there, I was thinking some were good and some were bad. I just really didn't know. But uh, I guess I got to watch the movie again, right? Watch the movie before you do a video, Mike. I should have. That's what I should have done. But it turns into a diamond. So Solitaire turns into a diamond. And she is pretty cool looking. It does shape like a diamond, but you can't really do much with her other than lay her down. Which there's really no way to get her to pose or do anything. I guess you can open her feet up just a bit so that she could sort of stand and display. But then it's not fully transformed and all that kind of stuff. But it would get the job done for a diamond to display. And here she is. Clear, transparent, transparent. Aqua green i i would kind of uh like a brighter blue and in pictures she looks brighter blue like right now that one's looking bright blue and then this one's looking aqua they're the same pretty much the same exact color but now i began tracking this one down uh years ago i got her one of them for like 26 bucks in an ebay auction but for as long as i can remember everybody always wants 100 bucks for her as long as i can remember for like since 05 so everyone thinks she's a hundred dollar figure. Now there's like everyone thinks she's 130, but getting that little sword is the hard part. That little sword there is kind of a challenge. And so with that, I well, got the one, and that she doesn't hold it very well. But she can't do much with it. She can just go side to side with it. It's really strange in the articulation department. And I think she's a cool looking figure, a really awesome. Also for Machine Robo, she was a dude called Diamond. Diamond, just Diamond. I looked one up. There's one on eBay right now for like. Two or three hundred, two hundred and thirty bucks or something like that. But uh, really cool. I'll try to throw a picture of the Machine Robo version because it does look different. This is Solitaire. All right. So the next one we have is Flame Stone. This one is made of red. He's red and uh, clear, transparent stuff. He turns into this, which is just him folded up into whatever this looks like. I kind of like the clear. It's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. I don't feel like it's really that weak or messed up looking. Here is the figure. He's got some like crazy yellow teeth and blue eyes and all that kind of stuff. Very limited articulation on him. And there is his weapon accessory. And I have one for each one. And uh, hard to get these weapons and accessories for these guys. Uh, these little things here kind of fold up. Your shoulders kind of fold up. That's part of the transformation. I'm not transforming any of these, by the way, because uh, I am afraid of breaking some of these later series ones. Especially because they're so hard to get but mean looking dude flamestone let's go ahead and check the next one out next up we have sunstone the orange dude and it's pretty cool too transparent clear uh really interesting stuff going on with this guy pretty cool looking overall i think he could sit perfectly fine either direction kind of cover up that head there but here he is i don't have his weapon so i'll have to put that on the screen and show his weapon he's got kind of a pink ish face he looks like he's kind of got uh, some eyebrows going on there with the blue eyes and all that. He does have a little bit of articulation like this. Uh, a little bit better articulation than some of the other ones, but his legs don't do a whole lot. He's got pelvis articulation too. Legs do go out though. But this guy is strange because his transformation, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but you flip it and then you basically fold the legs up in here. So really interesting, really strange, but pretty cool overall. This guy, these Jewel Lords look really nice on a shelf. They're getting quite expensive. I literally got all mine for about 40 to 50 bucks each uh, as I went through because I could not find these in lots or groups for a good price. So uh, with that, this is Sunstorm. A lot of fun. Wish I had his uh, weapon accessory, but I'll have a picture to show you. Next, we're going to take a look at Terra Rock. He's a terror. No, he's not a terror. He is a Rockosaurus, is that what they call them? Do they really call them Rockosauruses? That's kind of cheesy, but it it's kind of sounds like what they would call it, a Rockosaurus. Uh, capitalizing on dinosaur craze. Now, these things are built pretty well. They're built like a rock. Oh, wait, they are rocks. And here is his rock. 
looks uh, you know it kind of resembles an egg like he laid an egg and he's turned into an egg a rock egg and you know birds probably this bird back in the day laid an egg you can see his rib cage he's really hungry <laughs> this is an interesting figure overall. And this is something I, I didn't know they went this far and made this kind of stuff. But uh, these are kind of cool, kind of interesting. These later series ones are a lot more fun. I don't know when this one came out or when these figures came out. Uh, as I say, they're built like rocks. A lot of times you see tails broken off on these two figures that we're going to see. Or maybe the wings broken off or something. But oddly enough, th these aren't really super common. But they're not very expensive, and I think that was what makes this toy line a lot of fun to collect. You can get one of these for like 30 bucks. It's not bad, and 30 bucks in good shape. That's Terror Rock. Spike Stone is the next Rockosaurus, and if it looks like he really didn't do a whole lot to transform or convert or change a bull, because he didn't really. It's kind of interesting. He's, he's, you definitely don't need instructions for these. They just kind of do themselves as you flip this out and that out uh, some of them some of them you might want to to not break it but uh with these with these rock sources they're very intuitive and very simplistic but when, when they're done in both modes they look kind of good so it looks like a convincing rock and it looks like a convincing uh spike stone so he's pretty cool looking he has you can kind of see i guess it's supposed to be some bone in there like with the other one, you get his teeth, and I think his mouth opens up a little bit, and then which which on the bird the mouth didn't open, and he has this kind of spike thing that looks like a saw, and then uh, and they're usually in rough shape. Mine's in rough shape, uh, and then this one here, he's got the tail, which is kind of like a spiky tail kind of thing. He could grab with his tail. Anyway, kind of cool and still very affordable piece that you can get for your collection, which makes collecting rock lords fun. So before we go any further, I have to explain one problem with collecting Rock Lords. So let's say you got your collection of Rock Lords. You got your display set up like this. And, and then you realize something that, well, I just don't know where to store the weapons. Because there's no weapon storage. Where do you store the weapons? That is a problem. And that's why weapons get lost. And that's why it gets kind of hard to track them down later. But yeah, there we go with no weapon storage in rock mode. Okay, next up we get into Stonehook. And so this is the first of the uh, Shock Rocks, which they have a new action feature and a little bit of increased uh, playability. Mine is really tight. Arms can kind of go out to here and uh, pretty cool. The hands have a little bit of movement inward and outward. Legs uh, go out and part of the transformation. He can sort of kick forward, I guess. Uh, he's a beefy looking guy, but if you, if you push down on this, then it kind of releases the mechanism. There's a spring in there that has constant pressure, but if you push down on it, it releases the pressure. Now, I only have one of these guys, so I don't have his alt mode, but I'm going to show you what he can do. He has an articulated uh, claw piece right here, and you can sort of hook him on to someone. Um, you probably want to hook him on to a good guy or something, but then he hooks him on to him and just can kind of pull him forward if he wants to. Live, let's see how this works live on camera. Oh yeah, it works, it gets the job done. These gimmicks are pretty cool, but they can seize up over time. You, good thing you can just unscrew them and all the various screws and then kind of get the mechanisms to work again. But there's kind of got, it looks like he's a ninja though. But yeah, this is Stonehook, pretty cool. So next up we have Rock Shot as a shock rock. Rock Shot here. And he's a pretty cool looking figure. Uh, he really just looks like he folded his feet up on his back. And that's his transformation for the most part. Uh, there's a little more to it than that. But that's pretty much what it feels like. And he's got this ball on him constantly. But we can set that to a side. And then we got his face here. And his mouth. I think his mouth has nope, no articulation. You can just kind of fold that up to see his mouth a little bit here. You can widen his arms if it's something you want to do. His hands can sort of go in and out. Or mostly just out, I guess. Uh, so a little bit of articulation in that hand. This one here, not really. You can swivel it side to side. And then he does have, well, it looks like he should go all the way to the front. Kind of be able to do that kind of a pose with his legs and his leg articulation. But the gimmick with this guy has to do with these buttons up top here. So let's show what they do. First one is you pull this out. And it's under constant pressure. The button will just relieve well we'll relieve the restrainer on this so that the pressure of the spring pulls that thing so pretty cool 
Now the next thing is this arm. Now if you leave the arm sort of close in, you can just do a 360 with it. If you pull it out all the way, then it will catch on something which will lock it in place back here. And ah, oh, you see that when it locked in place, that button kind of went up a little bit. Now this is where it's going to be kind of tricky, and I might have to do a couple takes on it, but you put the ball on there, and then you push this, and it flings the ball like that. So I uh, got it all in one take. Surprising. And then you can just pull it back. So interesting, fun gimmick. I think it's kind of a fun gimmick. It's real fiddly, and it doesn't work as well as I just showed it all the time. Sometimes it's really hard to get the ball to sit on there. But yeah, rock shot. And next up is Roller Rock. So Roller Rock is the good uh, shock rock, and the other two were bad guy shock rocks, if that makes any sense. So Roller Rock is Rock Roller. Roller Rock, Rock Roller. The reason he's called Rock Roller is because it's all because of his rock mode, but he's got this wheel, and if you... If you just give it the little old friction there, he rolls. He rolls around, and he rolls okay. And he turns into this rock. Now, transformation's a little more complex with this guy than some of the other ones, but he's kind of got this crazy, grisly look on his face. He's like, Arr! like he's just been fried or something. Like he's been electrocuted and some yellow eyes. And uh, pretty cool little stubby arms. Looks like he's got just like a big old midsection and stubby arms and legs and stuff. But his transformation, his legs kind of flip around to a flipperoo and transform around. Uh, pretty cool looking guy though. Interesting. Uh, one of the harder ones to get. All these later series ones are a little harder to get than the first ones. Well, a lot harder to get than series one and two. That's for sure. But I don't even know if these are considered like series four or five or something. They're just their own thing. But this is Roller Rock and he looks pretty cool. I kind of like the, uh, the blend of colors in the blue and the white. This is Dragon Stone and he also comes in red. This is the European variant. I don't have the U.S. version, so I got had to, the only one I could find. My buddy helped me get was the European variant, and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm just glad to have one. It's happy to have one. I don't have to have them all. This is where the gimmicks start getting kind of cool. So if you just sit here and go, oh, you look, this is just like like a like a ball. Uh, had to get them reset. It's kind of like a ball or something like that. Then you push the button on the bottom, or you just gently drop them, and he pops open, and he's got a tail on him and all this kind of stuff. Not much playability to them, but they look cool on a shelf. And I mean, if you're a collector, obviously that's all you really care about. Does he look cool on a shelf? And heck yeah, he looks cool on a shelf. Resetting them, pushing everything back in. Uh, sometimes you'll have to just kind of push the button a bit to get everything to re-engage and stay. Arr. And then to get him to, you have to just gently set him down so that he doesn't pop. But there is Dragonstone. So next up we have Blast Rock, and this one here is kind of cool looking, interesting looking figure. I kind of like got a little back metal going on in there, some blue and a black one right here. And it looks a lot like the next one we're going to look at. They look very, very similar, but I, this whole line, when they make a series of figures, there's some similarities. But, but for the most part, uh, aside from them being round and having kind of the same transformation, there's a, no exact part reuse. They are similar, yet way different. You can kind of see some, is it back metalized? Kind of a engine looking thing on the inside there. Kind of cool. Same old gimmick. Same thing, different day. Oh, come on, pop. Okay, he's going to need a little help. This one needs a little help opening. What's going on here? I'm going to have to lube for pleasure there to get that thing to work a little bit better. But he looks pretty cool, pretty interesting. Uh, no tell on this guy because he's not a dragon. He's just a standard one. And they kind of rotate around. Cool looking figure overall. Shock Rock. Blast Rock. Okay, next up is Stun Stone. And looks a whole lot like this other one over here. So, as you can see, they look very similar. But yet they also look very different. So, for me it was like, oh, they're the same one, just different colors. No, but both of these have color variations also. So anyway... This is what he looks like. Got a little visor going on there. Kind of looks like some treads hanging out right here. Maybe that's like some laser beam blast kind of pieces here. They're spring loaded because they kind of tuck into there. Not really much going on inside there. Like the other one has some cool stuff going on inside there. This is all just bland inside there. But uh, his feature, boom, kind of weak. This one's kind of weak. They're worn out. Some minor worn out, old worn out ones because, well, there's not much to choose from because these are really hard to find. Stunstone, a little bit of fun. 
Next up we have the Rock Gnarlies. There are two series of Rock Gnarlies, and there are eight total. Well, nine if you count the Snarly Gnarly, but with this, uh, I'm playing a trick because this is two sets of Series 1. And they're pretty common, pretty cheap, pretty easy to get. They're really like 20 to 30 bucks a piece, depending on which one, which time, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go through these real quick. And then, i got to say, the Series 2 ones, I'll show a picture of them. They are impossible to find. They almost don't exist, and the only reason that I, I can even find a picture that proves they exist, I think they were actually one of those that was produced as a short test run, a very short run of test figures, but not full production. Anyway, let's get into these. This one is Gnarly Fant, looks like an elephant, and if you roll them, they kind of... It's hard to make them roll on that, but they, they kind of move. I'll show you on another one. This one's not wanting to work with me. Work with me, man. They have rooted hair, purple and interesting colors, the tail and nose move. This is Gnarly Gator. And... Uh, yeah, they they don't like to function as uh, very easily, but this isn't the best surface for rolling. So, okay, here's Gnarly Hog. I swear, I was rolling them on another surface. Like on the carpet, I think, is the best place to roll them. I don't know. But I don't, I don't know if it's the rooted hair and all that kind of stuff that kind of gives them some trouble with the rolling they're all having trouble rolling on this surface and then this is a uh, what gnarly okay, i think this is gnarly lizard and this is gnarly gator i don't know i don't know anyway these are some of the gnarlies and so the ones in the series two that i don't have would be like gnarly baboon gnarly lion gnarly bat and gnarly rhino and then there's the giant, what's that one called? Starly Gnarly. Don't have that one either. But kind of cool, kind of fun. They integrate with the vehicles. We're going to do that now. All right, so looking at the vehicles, this vehicle is called the Rock Pot. And this is really cool. It's like straight out of Flintstones, something that you would think is kind of a Flintstones kind of vehicle. And it's got lots of rubber here, rubber on this, rubber on the tires, which oddly enough, I, I was able to clean it up, make it all look brand new, but it attracts dust and... Uh, stuff real easy and dirt real fast real easy, but uh, it's got this little gun right here on the side It's got one wheel in the back a place to clip when we will do that here in a bit a place to clip a gnarly uh, Spot here for some rocks, and this is a bad guy and a good guy This is the good guy vehicle, and there's a bad guy in it But I'm going to show you kind of what I think that it's for uh, there's also like a little sticker right here to show some control panel, you're going to have a good guy here operating that, and then we have this little crane here. So what this does is it's going to grip something, and then you can put it here, I guess, and then as you roll, this thing here is going to move, and it's going to go up the conveyor. So this rock should go up the conveyor like that as it rolls hard to get all on camera and then you just do that over and over and over with a bunch of different rocks cool idea it's interesting vehicle this one's actually kind of hard to get but the good thing is when it pops up it's usually not very expensive so this is the rock pot let's look at the next one so there's a little spot on here i guess i forgot to show that and there's this notches in every one of these rock gnarlies i don't know if we can get that on there they have these notches and they kind of clip right into this and they ride there so they ride on the back of the rock pot and it's kind of cool that they designed it to integrate into it and to say that a year ago i didn't even know a rock gnarly existed so next up is the stone wing and it's pretty cool it's actually a little uh airplane jet for the bad guys uh kind of strange hard to figure out how to get magmar in here because like, I guess you can put him in here with his arms kind of hanging over and he can look like that. Or you can partially transform him to go in here. But pretty much all of them are going to have the same problem. You have to partially transform him to fit in the cockpit. And I'm pretty sure you could fit other figures from other lines in there. I'm sure Psykill would fit in there just fine. Um, you might be able to fit two uh, figures like Psykill in there side by side. But uh, it's a pretty good size and it's heavy. There's a lot of die cast. Seriously heavy and very well built. You know, one of the things... When you think about Tonka, Tonka trucks, and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into quickly a couple of the things that it does. It does kind of shoot this and 
you got to push that in to reset it, I guess. But that little front piece shoots. Um, if this doesn't go in back all the way, it's broken. I've seen a lot of them that are broken. This is a pretty cheap one. Though. I think it's like got this for like thirty bucks. It's not wasn't very expensive for this either. So uh, it does look like it's got some jet thrusters on the side, which turn into wheels when it transforms. And then on the back here, you got like a rear jet thruster, all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool overall. So let's go ahead and get the transformation done. We can uh, tuck this in. All right, went off camera there. Make sure, okay, you tuck this in as you fold it down. And then with this here, this is really cool transformation the way they do this. This little piece here comes up and you kind of disconnect right, right there. And then you move the wheels down and slide this forward. And then same thing over here, kind of disconnect those, lift that up, push the wheels down, slide this forward. And then you rotate this around whatever direction and you have a car so it's like it's kind of cool uh let me see if i can line it up just right am i missing something here there we go all right i guess uh you want them to have like be a notch down and then you have it right here so it'll sit like so so you don't want to fly it, you want to notch down i guess that's how it is put this back in and if you're like me, you probably dropped your magmar transforming it. But there it is. There it is in the vehicle mode. Well, the car mode. So kind of cool. A transforming vehicle that it has. And yeah, it's interesting. And it sort of rolls. I guess I should lube that up. Make it roll a bit better. But I like the jet mode the most. And it'll always stay in jet mode for me. But it's kind of fun that it transforms. Okay, so there's also the Fossil Saurus, which is really kind of cool. It's made up of four different figures that turn into different parts and make one big giant T-Rex. And yeah, it's it never was released in the U.S., just Japanese release only. So it's pretty expensive. Generally, it goes for between $500 and $900. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it, in my opinion. I don't need it. And it wasn't really part of the main line. It was Japanese only. So I can live without it unless I find it for a decent price. But yeah. I highly doubt I'll find it for a decent price. There were also two unreleased playsets, and one of them was the Stone Head playset, and it's pretty cool, pretty interesting. I, I'm not sure exactly the functionality, but I understand that you kind of put a figure in there and crank his head, looks like his jaw's chewing up a figure or something. Maybe that's what's going on with it, but they did feature this heavily in catalogs and stuff, even though it did not sell at retail, but it would have been cool if they made it. Then there was Stonehead Mountain, which actually opened up as a full-on playset. Had a gel cell and uh, stairs and two levels and all that kind of stuff. Really, that was kind of cool. That would have been a better seller, I think. But Stonehead Mountain, none of these got made. So it's kind of like what the line could have done if it kept going. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the Rock Lords. I just want to know, did you have any of these when you were a kid? Did this bring back any memories? Did you know every name of every one of these rock lords? Because I sure didn't about six months ago. <laughs> I'm not going to lie that, but... But hopefully this did bring some, some memories back. Hopefully you do have a little bit better understanding of rock lords and, and, and a bit of an appreciation for rock lords. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Turn your hair out. kingdom ruled by a rock lord and each rock lord was guardian of his kingdom's power scepter wow <laughs> does that craft is not of our world whatever that thing is it's blasting boulder back to the stone square farewell robot I have a feeling we'll be seeing them again.